afternoon, all you wonderful Walnuts people. It's Thursday the 21st of April, just a week or so after our wonderful meeting in the Market Square. It was great to see so many of you there. If you came, our sincere thanks to you all. We think there were over 350 people there at least. If you missed it, hopefully you pick up a lot of information from this video. Uh, which is, has got everything on it, plus this little bit from us at the end. Thanks, thanks everybody for coming. My name's Steve and this is Tim. I, I have to start by saying how disappointed we are that the BBC let us down at 9.15 this morning. We, the timetable was set by them so that they could come in the middle of the week because they couldn't come at weekends. But as I say, unfortunately, they dropped out this morning. We wonder if they've perhaps been leaned on by Bromley Council. Um, It, I'm afraid it won't go any louder. That's as loud as it'll go. If you want to step in a bit, come forward a bit. Come forward a come bit. Forward. We, we don't bite. <laughs> Hard. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, move forward. Yeah. Mingle. Mingle. The BBC were coming because uh, they were going to give us a right of reply. A right of reply to the biased interview that went out on the local London news a month or two back. You probably, you probably saw it, and that, that news item generated 40 or 50 complaints to the BBC, which is why they were going to come back today and give us the right of reply. But as, you could, as I say, they're not here, unfortunately. Um, well, yeah, please, so please make your own recordings if you can. We've got, we've got our own chap here who's going to film the whole thing. James, thank you, James, for coming. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're hoping that we can get the, get the whole thing up on a YouTube channel or something in the, in the near future instead. Um, we've been pushing for a public meeting for some time, which has been difficult because, again, Bromley Council don't want us to do it. Um, we, tried to hire the, we tried to get the Crofton Hall at the top of the road. We said, look, we've got 2,300 members of our group. They're all paying their community taxes can we not have the Crofton Hall? And they said, no, if you want it, you'll need to hire it. And that was, and that, the same came from Gareth Bacon as well. You'll hear from our committee today, and then also from other local interested parties who will be introduced as we go along. This group was set up in November last year by myself and Tim here, who had both attended the last Arelli exhibition in October which was a farce. I don't know how many of you went to it, but it was a farce. There were no photos to show the heights of the buildings, no scale models, only flat plans of the area. It was staffed by people from a marketing agency with only one member of Arelli staff actually present. In fact, they've only got seven staff anyway. One lady knew nothing about the area, didn't even know where the station was. Of course, subsequently, Arelli's planning application went into Bromley on the 21st December. It then became much clearer as to the, the huge scale of these plans. 990 flats, 15 blocks, two of them 20 storeys high, one of them right here, another seven of them higher than the college. Only a small number of extra car parking spaces as we don't need cars, do we? No one needs cars anymore. The, then they, the, the leisure centre was to be demolished and the Saxon centre and a smaller leisure centre as a replacement with a smaller swimming pool for the extra two and a half thousand people. And that meant that there would likely, likely not be a leisure centre for at least three years. The leisure centre has 19 and a half thousand visits a month, 650 a day and most classes are always full. Where are all these people supposed to go for the next three years? Ah, yeah. oh, but they did promise us 1,800 cycle bays extra. 
<laughs> so everyone's going to get rid of their cars and we're all going to go around on bikes. We know that this is not true. A million pounds was spent on the cycle lanes by the station and only a dozen cyclists a day are using them. But someone did report seeing a fox in one of the lanes the other day. <laughs> Since we founded this group, we've grown to nearly 2,300 members and, and 3,400 objections have gone in. 3,400 objections have gone into Bromley. This is the fourth largest number of objections ever to be raised in the UK. And any minute now we'll be third. As many of you will know, the application date has now been extended to the end of July. We believe this is to enable Bromley to go through all of our objections. There is, of course, it's still time to send more in. Also, is it a co coincidence that the local elections are now only three weeks away? Today we will hear from candidates from the Liberal Democrats and the Labour Party, and I think somebody from the Conservatives as well. Um, we invited Gareth Bacon, we wrote to him, he did not answer our email. <laughs> after, his, after his Facebook survey, which showed overwhelming opposition, he did, of course, object himself to these plans. But as I say, he's chosen not to be here today. Neither of the two local Conservative councillors for this ward, Kim Botting and Pauline Tunnicliffe, so they've refused to come today. Uh, we've, today we've got copies of our original leaflet which we delivered to over 20,000 homes in 370 local roads. That, that was really, this is where our campaign really kicked off as one of our members managed to get the leaflets printed for free. So uh, thanks to her. We have a core team of a dozen of us who are running this group with the, other, with the help of some other local residents we delivered all these 20,000 leaflets by hand. By the way, of course, I really say they communicated with 41,000 local people. We know this is not true, as many, many, many of us never received anything from them. We also have for some posters for you to display, if you can, in your front windows, on posting gardens, etc. Please take one. Finally, we had printed copies of the postal application form recently. Uh, this is to be completed and sent in by next week if you cannot get to the polling station on the 5th of May. We would urge you all to, to vote this time. No, normally the uh, local elections only raise about 30 to 40 percent of the population. Uh, if we can get more people out we can hopefully make some changes. Uh, we asked for donations on our Facebook site and we received about a thousand pound in total. M money has been spent so far on a small amplifier, so the postal application forms, the hire of our professional vide videographer and, um, and some other leaflets. We therefore are holding a balance at the moment of about 460 pounds. Um, I think that's that would be enough for me. I'm going to hand over to Tim and let him do his five minutes. Just to say thank you. Thank you to my good wife, Jill, who supported me through all this. It's been a very, very difficult and time-consuming journey. And it literally has taken over our lives. We're eating, breathing and living the Walnuts campaign. I want to thank all the members of the core team and a number of other people like Paul and Tara behind the scenes who've been offering advice and support for people who aren't necessarily comfortable on the social media. And I want to also thank some of the councillors here for their support and encouragement as well. You've got Simon and you've got Keith and you know, they've been invaluable. So yes, my view is I'm disappointed but not surprised with some of the media outlets today. Oh God. And I think to myself, well this tells us we're on to something because I think there's an awful lot of pressure we've brought to bear, and I want to thank everyone who's made a comment or put an objection in. I mean, I was expecting about a thousand. At the moment, we're standing about three thousand three hundred. So well done. So well done to all. Well done to all of you. I've been absolutely staggered. And just to, just to sort of say, the closing date is still the end of July. So those of you who haven't made an objection, 
please do so. We've brought some leaflets along, and if you want to um, object either online or by writing or by doing an email, that is perfectly valid. And uh, there, there, there is no magic number to get us over the line. However, what we're doing is making an impact. Um, Steve's mentioned voting, so I didn't go into that anymore. Um, and what I would say to people is that we've got uh, posters available, so please put your support up, show your support in your various houses and streets. I've just come back from Lodge Crescent talking to the residents there, and they were plastering the whole area because certain roads like Lodge Crescent, Bruce Grove, Uplands Avenue, and you've got War sorry, uh, sorry, Uplands Road, Walnuts Road, and Homefield Rise will be adversely affected. And I know that the residents there are very concerned. Um, what concerns me about the um, planning application, this is my favourite story, so though you've heard it before, I'll bore you with it again. I went to the planning consultation with Steve. Now, I didn't know Steve at the time, and I came back and I thought, this doesn't look too bad. So the already obviously worked. I then did something silly. I then built a Duplo scale model on my kitchen table and thought, and thought oh my God, what are they trying to do here? Because at the time, the initial tower was 250 feet high. It's now come down to 220. Um, bearing in mind that the college is 140 feet high, so I think when I, when I and that led me to start the Facebook group, group with Steve, and then we never imagined we'd be have enough people for a gathering like this. So thanks to everyone, thanks to all of you for turning out today. We do appreciate it in your busy schedule, and thank you again for your ongoing support. It does mean a lot to us because I think we're in this campaign for the long term. It's not going to be a short, easy campaign. I didn't realise how difficult it was going to be, but thanks to everyone's support and the turnout today, when I had this in mind, my fear was we'd have more people from the Nuts of the Walnuts team than there would be actually people in the crowd. So a big thank you to all of you, and please, please, you know, and please keep on Thank you very much. Cheers. Oh, that works, I think. Um, so, yes, I'm, my name's David Morrison. I'm standing for the... My name's David Morrison, standing for the Liberals in this, the, this side. But this this, um, this uh, project has raised the most objections, I think, that have ever been in Bromley. OK. The, re the reasons that... Ah, uh, that the uh, project is is out of character with Excuse the me, area. Can you be consistent with the way you hold the megaphone, otherwise they can't hear you? I know it's difficult because if I speak it. this hold side, hold they can't hear. Okay. I'm very unpractised at this sort of thing, as you can see. Um, so yes, the, the the we want to get something that's more in character and basically less big. Um, the, the, the proposal of a 20-storey tower block just is completely out of keeping with the character and nature of this area. People have valid concerns about the effect of two to 3,000 mark residents living in this small space and what their requirements will be for schools and health and other things such as parking. So m my view is that you could almost cut it in half. It would still be a major contribution. We do accept that um, development and improvement would, is needed and would benefit this area, but it is really just the scale of what is proposed that has led to so many objections. Um, and that's really what I have to say for now. Right, can you all hear me? Yes. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to David Morrison, who just stood. He has never been active in politics before, but he's standing for the Liberal Democrats because he is so angry about this development. Never spoken in public before. Well done, David. He has absolutely championed our side of the campaign. Um, I joined the Liberal Democrats because, and this was only about five years ago, because Liberal Democrats' way is to let the community be heard. 
Don't tell the community what they want. Listen to what they want. And oh my God, are you speaking? And what an amazing team with Tim and Steve and the nuts to the walnuts. I am blown away. I think we can safely say we know what the people of Orpington want and they don't want this. But we do want some development in Orpington. I think we all know that. But what we hope is we hope it will include housing for Bromley and Orpington families. Some affordable housing. My daughter, who's 30, is never going to leave home unless we build some affordable housing. <laughs> and what about the teachers and nurses? Where are they going to live? We need to make sure that they hear us. Vote for anybody who's going to object to this development on the 5th of May. And I hope you'll vote for Rick and David, the two Liberal Democrat candidates. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we should, be, we should be hearing from James Talbot today, who's the Labour Party um, uh, uh, candidate for this ward. Unfortunately, James proved positive this morning, I think, so he's not coming. But to, we, we're lucky to have with us Richard Honnes, who'll talk about the Labour Party. Richard's standing in the Cray ward, not in this ward. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me OK? <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen and my fellow Orpingtonians, firstly I want to say thank you, thank you so much for turning out in such numbers today. Um, it's, it's been an absolute uh, pleasure to see so many people and a pleasure to be working with the Nuts to Walnuts campaign team. Uh, they've been absolutely brilliant bringing this together, so thank you very much for bringing this together. It's been about a year now since... Um, a couple of our members brought to our attention the uh, proposals, the original proposals uh, that O'Reilly had um, put in. And frankly, we were horrified. And we were horrified for lots of the reasons that everybody here is probably horrified. We were horrified of the size and scope. We were horrified of the blot on the landscape that this proposal is actually going to be. Not just for the people within Orpington Ward itself, not just, although they're vitally important, of course, the people that live around the back there, the people that live over on the Knoll area, but also the people in the surrounding areas. As I say, I'm, I'm actually um, a candidate in St Mary Cray, and there are various... Uh, thank you all my St Mary Cray people. Hello. Um, and we have got numerous views of Orpington, which would be absolutely blighted by this development. We also have a lot of pressures in the surrounding areas that we've spoken about. Doctors, schools, the same as everywhere else. And you know, as well as I do, as soon as these large developments start taking hold, they spread. They don't just stop with the, with the, with the, with the developments here. We've already got um, developers snapping on the heels of our green belt which is absolutely unacceptable. Okay? I know it's highly unlikely that that will come to anything, but if you're a developer, you don't spend millions of pounds buying uh, sections of Greenbelt for development without expecting something, do you? So, we have been constant and consistently opposed to this particular development. And I echo what everybody so far has said. Yes. Orpington does need development. Yes, Orpington does need housing. But not these plans. These plans are a blot on the landscape. They do not achieve what the plans should be achieving. 300,000 for a one bedroom apartment, is that affordable? No. Well, that's the cheapest in this development. I'm, I'm now a middle aged professional. I couldn't afford a one-bedroom flat on that development. Could anybody else here afford it? No. So what about our young people wanting to get on the ladder? What about our, our young professionals? What about our key workers, as been mentioned before? They got no chance. So to echo my colleague from the Liberal Democrats, on the 5th of May, look very carefully at your ballot paper. Look who is most likely to win and oppose 
these plans. In Samiri Cray, I have to say, that's probably us, me, and my colleagues Nat and Debbie, who are down at the front. In Orpington, our Liberal Democrat colleagues, in fact, even in Pittsburgh, some of our Conservative colleagues. I'm not even, I'm not even, you know, I'm not going to criticise them for that. Because when they're on the right side, they are on the right side. And if you're in St Paul's Cray, it will also be uh, our Labour candidates over there. So, be careful, use your vote on the 5th of May, get out there, keep complaining, keep putting in your objections, and we can win this. Thank you very much, Orpington. Okay, good. Uh, there's no doubt that something needs to be done about Alvin, the town centre. This development isn't it. I would be voting against it, and certainly I don't want to see something like the developments in Lewisham and Croydon coming to the centre of Orpington. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's all right, you'll have to forgive me, I'm just getting over COVID, so I'm a bit short of breath. Uh, don't worry, I'm not infectious, so I'm not spreading anything around here. Uh, first of all, to dispel one or two rumours, uh, Gareth Bacon isn't here today, but uh, then again, the MP doesn't make the decision on planning issues in this uh, instance. Uh, I am here today as a pets with an old councillor. I will be uh, on the, uh, uh, in the council, and I will be voting against this development. Having said that, there are some number of things that we do need to do. Certainly, as far as the leisure centre is concerned, we do need to have a state-of-the-art leisure centre in Orpington. I think we deserve it, and so do the people that use it, and it's particularly relevant for our younger people. And I will be campaigning to have that. I think it's always why, on. Why can't you rebuild the new one before you knock the old one down? Yeah. 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 Look, if you give me a moment to speak, I'll tell you. Let, 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 him, finish, let him finish speaking. Please. I think it's important, and I've put uh, ideas forward, that we should be building a leisure centre uh, somewhere, uh, possibly in the town centre, possibly on the edge, I don't know. That's something for debate before the current We've got a leisure centre, you idiot. We just want it refurbished. Yeah. There are different views as to what should happen to the leisure centre, and I think it's important that we, first of all, get some plans together and actually discuss that with residents. Bromley have not talked to us, have they? Aurelie have talked to us, not Bromley. Have Aurelie? And there was no mention of demolishing it. I'm talking to you now. Uh, I've come along here today to talk to you, to listen to what you have to say. Um, and we don't trust you. <laughs> Tories do not act in the interests of the people they're supposed to represent. Yeah. Thank you for the interruption. Um, pity you didn't interrupt the other speakers, but in fact we do. We spend an awful lot of time on planning issues and we're responsible for an awful lot of issues in the area that have benefited the area, such as the conservation areas and also the areas of special residential character. So I'm sorry you don't think we act for you, but we do act for the majority of people in the area. Certainly as far as this development goes, we'll be looking, uh, I'll be looking to oppose these plans, and my understanding is that the two candidates in Orpington will also be looking to review their position and probably oppose the plans as well. Thank you. We do, both, we do know, though, that both the local ward councillors supported the supported the building of the, these plans up until very recently, 
it really is only because of the amount of objections from us against it that they slowly started to move their uh, position slightly. Okay. Um, okay, well, Stella's next. Um, Stella's is, uh, uses the leisure centre a lot and swims a lot. Um, she's going to be talking on behalf of the OJ's Swimming Club, who couldn't be here today because a couple of their people are away on holiday. So Stella's going to going to read something that they that they wrote last week for us. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Right, so I'll try and keep shouting. Um, this is from everyone at Orpington OJs who would like to thank the local people for their support and encouragement in our campaign to keep Orpington swimming. While we are, of course, back in Nuts to the Walnuts group, our focus is firmly on the town not losing the swimming pool and leisure centre for any length of time. Any closure of the centre for more than a month or so would mean the end of our club, which has been based at the Walnuts for almost 50 years. Plus, of course, it would have a huge negative effect on the health and well-being of Orpington residents. We believe there could and should be alternatives to the Arelli plan to demolish the centre years before a new one is built. For example, a new leisure centre could be built first, adjacent to the current centre. That's happened in Swanley and in Bexley Heath, so it can open before the old one is demolished. Or a new site could be found elsewhere. Two, a temporary pool could be built locally to cover the time the walnuts is closed. Three, the redevelopment could be phased so that parts of the leisure centre stay open while others shut, meaning closure is kept to a minimum. Or a fourth, the redevelopment, the, the current leisure centre could be refurbished. The pool area particularly, it's not beyond help and with a bit of thought and some investment it could definitely be saved for years to come. And now to the plans themselves. Now they've been published we also have some big concerns about the planned pool. The, although the pool is shown to be eight lanes of 25 metres, that's excellent. The area around the pool, though, isn't big enough for officials and swimmers at a competition. This is the problem with the new pool at Dover, a good example of a beautiful new pool not being built to the right spec. The lanes are shown to be two metres wide, which is fine in theory. It's wide enough for competition, it sounds good except two metres isn't wide enough for public swimming or training because you can't pass another swimming, swimmer sorry, in a two metre wide lane. That means for public sessions every other lane rope would need to be removed and you're suddenly down to four lanes instead of eight. In a 33 metre pool, which is what we have at the moment, you can have 10 swimmers in a lane. That means there can be 60 swimmers at the current walnuts in one public swimming session. In a 25 metre pool, you should really only have 6 or 8 at a push. So the maximum swimmers you'd have would be 32. Making the lanes wider, 2.5 metres wide, would help here. Of course that means making the whole pool wider which would mean taking space from something else in the centre or make the whole centre bigger. The planned training pool is shown to be tiny, more like a little splash pool like the small baby pool at the pavilion and with no spectator seating. 
That means it's not suitable for children's lessons, which means the children will have to learn in the large pool. But a competition standard pool is too deep and generally too cold. Either it's suitable for competitive swimming or it's suitable for kids' lessons. It's unlikely to be both. Plus, rope, roping off a section of the pool for lessons means there are less lanes for public swimming. The changing rooms. The changing rooms seem unsuitable. They seem too small to fit swimmers after training, let alone during a competition. From what we can see, there are 40 single cubicles included on the plans. There are no group changing rooms and only four family cubicles. There's simply not enough lockers unless they're aware there'll be fewer swimmers at each session. <laughs> Another consideration is that the changing rooms are mixed sex. Some people are uncomfortable with this, while others are not. It may be for many reasons, cultural, religious, or just their own preference. They would be put off using the pool, or would opt instead for the dry changing rooms, which are single sex and closer to the pool. We can't see any disabled facilities, changing rooms or toilets. And finally, parking. Clubs travel across the southeast for competitions, often with very early starts on a weekend morning or late finishes on a weekend evening. No one is going to come from Gillingham or Dover or Thanet on public transport at seven o'clock on a Sunday morning with all their kit, equipment and food. Or travel home to Dagenham, Lewisham or Greenwich at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night on the bus. It's not possible. Plus, time-strapped parents often squeeze in a child's swimming lesson between school or other activities. They need to be able to park. Although the developers keep saying this pool is in accordance with Swim England guidance, they've not consulted properly, and Swim England have objected to the plans officially. So as far as we can see, from the very limited plans available, the leisure centre is more akin to a health club, like Virgin Active or Bannatines, than a community facility. It would be a wonderful asset for the residents of the tower above, but not for the residents of Orpington generally. Yeah. 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 going to be talking particularly, I think, about the access to, to the plans to the new place for dis disabled people. Right, can you, can you all hear me all right? Yes. Hi, my name is Paula Peters and I'm Chair of Bromley and Croydon Unite Community uh, Branch. Our branch treasurer is here, but I'm also representative of a group called Disabled People Against Cuts, or DPAC for short. I've been an Orpington resident my entire life. I went to school not half a mile from here. I'm a disabled person myself. Now I've looked through these plans at details and the lack of access is truly appalling. Now the, the proposed walnut, the proposed swimming pool has no standing room around the pool. It means disabled people who use the current walnuts pool for hydrotherapy and for aquafit will not be able to use the pool for hydrotherapy going forwards because they won't be able to access the pool in the first place. Now I don't know if you've heard of a thing called the Equalities Act of 2010, but when planning people, when developers um, uh, provide access services, they've got to make sure it's accessible. Aurelia are not doing that, they're breaking equality act law. It's discriminating against disabled people. That is a clear objection you need to put forward. And I've got to say, you can put in more than one objection. Put in 10, put in 20, but put in loads. The lack of access in the swimming pool in the leisure centre is truly appalling. But also the public toilets that they're going to put behind Unit 27 is not accessible 
for disabled people using power wheelchairs, not accessible for disabled people using class three mobility scooters. That breaks equalities law, O'Reilly, and believe you me, you can be sued and we're getting a legal firm looking at that right now. And let's look at the assisted living in a tower block. A 12-storey tower block is where they're going to put 200 flats for over 55 assisted living flats. People with mobility issues. Now, if you have, you use a wheelchair, you use a mobility scooter, it should be ground floor. If you've got, it should be first floor. That's not going to be the case here in this development. It breaks equalities law, but it's more than that. This government are refusing to issue personal emergency evacuation plans for disabled people in tower blocks. That is an absolute outrage. And we remember the victims of Grenfell, disabled people who died in that tower. We say to Iraeli, we're not going to have disabled people in a tower block who can't get out when there's a fire because they will die without access. But also, you need to remember that the London Fire Brigade have said they cannot fight a fire above 10 storeys in height. And that is important to stress, that only six weeks ago, there was a, tower, there was a fire in a 17-storey tower block in Aldgate. The people inside it didn't even hear the fire alarms. And unless somebody was knocking on doors, there would have been serious consequences. But this is a clearer message to Aureli. And we talk about the car park. The car park has no accessible lifts for disabled people using class three mobility scooters or power wheelchairs. Aureli have said they're too expensive to put in. They're a multi-million pound conglomerate. You can put in accessible lifts, but you choose not to because you're saying disabled people are not worth having access to decent services. Well, we've got a message for you. We're going to take you to the highest level court in the land if we've got to, to prove how inaccessible these plans are, how discriminatory towards disabled people they are, and you haven't heard the last. But we need all of you on the 5th of May to give Bromley Council a clear message that we say no to this development, that we want a public consultation on what we want for this town. And we haven't had that. But we've got to unite, we've got to fight, and we've got to make it an Orkington Centre that's right for all of us. Thank you for having me speak to you all today. Okay. Well done. Thank you, Paula. Uh, we're going to hear from Pam Reeman. Is Pam here somewhere? Go on, Pam. Pam. Pam is uh, Pam is with a local charity, and she wants to speak of just for a few minutes as well. in Bromley, the whole of Bromley and beyond and I can assure you there are many homeless people in this borough and they are struggling. There is no social housing, there's only housing associations which do not house homeless people, the list is so long. We are fighting to get these people somewhere to stay and I will tell you all that we can achieve. We need to have social housing in this borough and somebody, somebody has got to start this up. We are, when in the winter, we have to put homeless people in hotels costing £60 a night. And the only place we can find for them is in the private sector. The private sector are building, are using houses, splitting them into six to eight rooms, and they are getting £890 for each room. So somebody is making a fortune. And these rooms are so tiny, I've seen many of them. You couldn't swing a cat in it. 
Some of them are quite good. Some of them are disgusting. I had a group of homeless come back to me and say, I'd rather live on the street than live in there. So we really need to do something about social housing in Bromley. The problem is getting worse and worse. We are really busy. We don't have enough staff. And Bromley Council do very little to help because they have nowhere to put them. And the only places they put them is outside of the borough. So Bromley must get some form of social housing, however it is. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay, we've got and Andrew is a member of our Nuts to the Wall Nuts team and he's going to speak for a few minutes as well. Thank you. Hi guys, thanks for coming along. Much appreciate it. Just want to leave you with a few facts. Um, according to Bromley, there's 140,000 addresses in Bromley. They've only got access to 70,000 email addresses. In the apparent consultation that Bromley did um, back in 2020, they only reached out to 40,000 email addresses. Now, I've been on the streets here in Orpington. You might have seen me uh, with the Nuts to the Wall Nuts group and with the Lib Dems. Um, many people in Orpington do not have access to social media. So this has not been heard. We know from walking the streets and bumping into people, people have not heard about this. It's only because of 10 of us or so that randomly got together, particularly after the consultation in October, that this group formed. We are inexperienced. I was even told that I'm playing at being a councillor or playing at politics. Well, yeah, why, why not? I'm not experienced. We've got no backstory. We just want to do what's right. So just moving on a couple of things. There is still consultation going on. Um, there's the planning consultation. But there's something called a specific planning document. I must admit, it's an absolute minefield. We've been working behind the scenes and it's great to have such a wide range of people speaking, but basically we're all saying the same. We're being duped here. Um, specific planning document was considered in early 2020. It ran from the, 7th, the 15th of July to the 5th of October during COVID. I don't think many of us got to hear about it. I'm pretty certain that not all the councillors representing us got to hear about it. Um, and believe it or not, this was run on a computer site called Commonplace. Never heard of it, so it's not that common. <laughs> Only 170 people responded. Now, wouldn't you have thought out of 40,000, 170 sh should throw up a few red flags? But no, it didn't. The draft of the SPD was based upon those 170 re returns. Now, the executive is turning around and saying he doesn't want any bad decisions on his CV. Well, I think he's made a few in the past. Uh, maybe there's opportunity in the future to put that right. But do leopards change spots? I don't know. Um, they are saying in the council, the council is saying they demand quality and class for a long-term future of Orpington. Let's they just suppose this... <laughs> or the green belt or something like, like that. So even after this perhaps gets, get, gets through, we need to be assured as residents of Orpington or nearby that we do get quality and we do get class. Um, it's a developer. Once you've given them planning, everything changes. You lose control. Some of this area is owned by Bromley Council. And what did they say about this? They said the council still has to come to an agreement with Arelli. So I have no idea what that, that means. So as far as I read it, Arelli doesn't have the whole site yet. And I just want to support Paula here because we were looking at the plans. And what is really awful about the disabled access is planning. Policies are not prescriptive for disabled access. So whatever's on the plans now will change. They're not prescriptive for disabled access. I've taken those words off a written answer to a written request to the council. What they do go on to say, but it's okay because part M of the building regs would apply. Now, 
I'm just blue sky thinking here. It's not being designed for disabled access. When they get round to detailed planning, maybe they'll consider it. Maybe they'll then say, oh, we've had to spend a fortune on disabled access, so we can't do X, Y, and Z. I don't know, this is the big problem. There's just so much unknown about this. They haven't been transparent. The, uh, the, the consultation has been pathetic, and that's why, why nuts started. So I'll just leave you with one other thing. Um, refurbishing the pool is allegedly down to 10 million to refurbish the pool. Arelli say that they've put aside 21 million to refurbishing or building a new pool. At Gravesend, a new pool costs 34 million pounds. The land value, allegedly, 7 million pounds. So there's a hell of a lot of differences to those figures. Um, as far as I can see, the work has not been peer reviewed. Um, it's, it's just there. So thanks for listening to me. I'll hand you back to Steve. Hello, I'm Simon Forthop, one of the councillors for Petswood and Knoll Ward. In, to, in relation to consultation, the council, as has been mentioned, ha is consulting on the supplementary planning document, which somebody mentioned. That is in relation to the whole of Orpington High Street. It goes from that end, from, sorry, from the end where the War Memorial is, right to the other end uh, where, where you've got the, the White Hart pub. And it's very important that people do respond to that particular consultation because it is what shapes the future of Orpington High Street. In that consultation, you as individuals and as residents can actually say things like, we do not want high-rise blocks, we do not want uh, overdevelopment, we want the refurbishment of the, of the swimming pool, we want the refurbishment of the, of the leisure centre. All of those things are possible. And it's really important that people do find that on, on the council's website and respond to it. So there have been consultations. Um, I'm going to finish it off today. I'm going to try and read through this and hold this at the same time. You've heard from various people today. Please ensure you vote on the 5th of May and encourage all your friends and neighbours to do so. The last local election only got 40% of the local population out. So it's not enough. Please get everybody to vote. You cannot be critical of local decisions if you don't vote. As a group, as a group we are non-political, but we think we're all agreed that a change is needed locally. It's been too cosy for too long. You've heard from the two parties today here that have shown that they really do oppose it. And that's... Um, Richard it is standing in the craze and hopefully Labour will do well there. We hope that the Lib Dems will do well here. Please consider when casting your votes. Just hang on a sec, sorry. Can I ask one question? Who actually deferred the planning permission from after the election? Bromley Council. Bromley Council. And is that the Conservative Party in the Yes. Uh, one of our people, uh, Carol, I'm not sure she's here today or not, but uh, she, she wrote a nice top ten of things that we do want. So let me just read from her list. Number one, development which complements the character of the town and the Priory Conservation Area. Yeah. Two, low and mid-rise buildings, no higher than existing residential buildings. Yeah. Number three, good quality housing of appropriate density, which is affordable for locals and with sp specific key worker provision. Number four, clear plans for delivery of Orpington's health, education and public services to meet the needs of an ex expanded population. Number five, a retail and com community hub for all generations. Number six, a quality daycare centre for the elderly with good access to outside space and services available throughout a development project. Number seven, a leisure centre to be, be, to be built back better before the existing one is demolished, with capacity to accommodate new residents. Number eight, enough parking and charging points for residents and for visitors for a major town centre. 
Number nine, sustainability and environmental impact to be at the heart of the development. Number 10, sources of local pride that regenerate a local identity as much as the local economy. We recently discovered that Bromley had £427 million invested in various places, overseas, etc., including apparently Bromley owned the land for a, super, a Morrison supermarket in Nottingham and the land for a McDonald's restaurant on the south coast. Why aren't they investing the money locally? Why are they investing in Nottingham? We will, continue to, we will continue to inform you on our Facebook site of any further developments as and when they occur. Thanks for your support and your time. Please collect your posters and your postal application forms. Uh, we'll be here for some time. If, if you have any questions, please come and speak to any of us on our committee. And I think that, that, that just about will sum it up for today. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you first of all to everyone who turned out. We had at least 350 people, which I felt was absolutely, you know, absolutely sensational on the day. And one of the things we value on this campaign is everyone's support. It does mean a lot to us because it has been a difficult campaign and we are in it for the long haul. It's not going to be over in say three to six months time. Can we now ask you to do the following three things, please? Number one, ensure you vote in the local elections on the 5th of May. There are candidates standing in most of the Alpington and Bromley wards for the three major parties. Two of those parties we know are completely against the Walnut plans. The, uh, the third party, it's not quite so clear. We know that we think that some of the councillors are against it and we think that some of them are for it. So it's not quite so clear. So please vote on the 5th of May. Two, Please keep on submitting the objections. Now, some people may be a bit concerned. If you've done an objection already, it doesn't matter. Please do another one. And there is no magic number to get us over the line when it comes to objections. We've got over 3,400 so far. And really, this is giving a message to the council and to the developers that there's a lot more discontent among the residents of Orpington as to what the impact of these proposals will be. So please keep on submitting objections. There are links within our Facebook group. And the closing date is the 31st of July, so there's still time. If you forgot something on your original objection, send another one in. Send as many as you like. And the third thing is, can you please uh, respond to the supplementary planning document, which is up on the Bromley site now? There is some, there are some ex explanations on how to answer the response that, on our Facebook site. So have a look at our Facebook site if you want some tips on how to answer. And the other thing I wanted to say really was. Uh, I felt for a while we needed our own communication channel or a, or a YouTube channel because when we had the event in the public square, which, which you um, pleased to say has actually got a, a front page mention on a new shopper this week. So that's, I was over the moon with that actually because I did put a lot of work in to, to um, inviting people from the media. Unfortunately on the day we had some no-shows. Uh, we had to do it on a Tuesday because of a media request that that didn't quite work out. The next one we do, whenever we do it, we will do it on a Saturday afternoon. And as Steve has said, what we're looking to do is to get another um, event planned for a Saturday this time, when hopefully more people will be, will be able to attend. Thanks to all of you for your continued support. It does, I say, mean an awful lot to us and does keep us going. Thanks, guys. So I think that's enough from me for, for now. So just again to say thank you very much for your support. To, together we can make a difference.